Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So if the title of this video doesn't get me put on some sort of FBI watch list, like what will really? Um, because today we're gonna be talking about my favorite serial killer books. Uh, I think we all have a secret fascination with serial killers or many of us do. There's been a lot of think pieces in the last few years with the rise of true crime podcasts, kind of talking through like, why is it that we are so fascinated with serial killers? Um, and I thought that this, you know, this is seasonally appropriate. We're moving into Spooktober. Uh, so I thought that it was the right time of year for me to talk about this with you guys. But it was also because I've realized that I've just read a lot of serial killery type books this year. And it's a trope or a type of book that I really enjoy both in fiction and in nonfiction. Some of the books that I've read this year that have had a big serial killer element to them include The Widow at Pale Harbor, which I really liked. Uh, the Diviners by Libra Bray. I was a little more iffy on that one. Um, Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. I really liked. It's sort of a Jane Eyre retelling as a serial killer. Um, and then I just finished this nonfiction book called Serial Killers, The Method and Madness of Monsters. And it is a history of serial murder. Uh, I would say this is written in 2004. It is a little dated, I think, especially in terms of some of its sort of uh, implicit understanding of the psychology of non-male non-cis or non-straight peoples, um, especially kind of trying to talk through what at the time I'm sure was the accepted sort of psychology of some, you know, gay serial killers or serial killers who at least targeted um, people of the same gender, etc. So I would, I would give you a caveat there that I think some of that reads a little weird today, but it is a very interesting uh, sort of just like recap of like known serial killers, uh, how psychologists have sort of evolved in their understanding of why people become serial killers, all that good stuff. So anyway, I did quite enjoy this and thought it was a very interesting nonfiction book, but it made me think, you know what? I really do love serial killer books in general. Um, so maybe I can make my favorite list of those for October. In case people are in a creepy reading kind of mood, I can give them some suggestions of ones that I like. And uh, yeah, that is how this video is born. So without further ado, uh, I think I've got, let me see here, eight fiction picks and two nonfiction. So I guess we'll start with the nonfiction picks first and then move into the fiction. So in terms of nonfiction, I would say my two favorite ones that center around serial killers, um, I, I will tell you that I did not include The Devil in the White City because I think I'm in the minority of not really loving that book that much, though the story itself is very interesting. And, you know, props to Eric Larson. He's he's a great writer, just wasn't my personal favorite. So side note, hot take there. Um, but I did really love I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara, which is about the Golden State serial killer uh, who was actually apprehended shortly after this book was published. published last year. The thing that I think makes this so special is that it is sort of a genre blend because it blends the true crime investigation of the serial killer with Michelle McNamara's like kind of own memoir or her own process of finding the serial killer or trying to find the serial killer. I think the writing is like a cut above what you normally get in true crime and um, I just think that in general this this was a really special book when it came out and I it stuck with me. It's very I, well I guess I should just say this in general. If you all the content warnings. All of these books include really difficult descriptions of people being very violent to each other, sometimes violent just like normally physically, sometimes sexually, sometimes emotionally, sometimes verbally. Like it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. And so just know that about every single one of these books. <laughs> like you need to have some triggering content warnings um, because part of the Golden State Killer was that he was also a serial rapist. So there's a lot of difficult descriptions of that. The way that he used the serial uh, sexual predator component to like psychologically terrorize people was a lot. So anyway, this is a great book. It got a ton of hype last year and it was well earned. And then I would say that the other nonfiction pick I would give you of one that I really liked and really stuck with, with me was The Good Nurse. And I actually can't even remember who the author is right now, but this was chronicling uh, one of the most prolific serial killers ever, who was essentially sort of like an, I don't know if really you could call him an angel of mercy, but he was a, a nurse who used his position to murder dozens and dozens of people. I will tell you, if you are sick or have anyone in your life who is sick and is going to be in the hospital quite a bit, don't read this because it will make you side eye every medical professional who you come in contact with because what this really highlights is just like, 
we put so much trust in people in these like critical moments of our own health. And if there's somebody who has bad intentions, uh, they can get away with that for a very long time. So uh, thank you to all of you wonderful medical professionals out there who are trying to save lives. Um, and this book will scare the crap out of you <laughs> if, uh, if you've ever thought about the fact that, um, yeah, they have access to a lot of uh, very scary drugs that they could misuse. So that was my other favorite nonfiction pick. I really liked it. I gave it to my mom. It scared the shit out of her too. So that was one that really creeped me out and I really liked. Okay, and then in coming up with the rest of my list, something that I've realized is that while I do quite like a serial killer element in my book, um, I tend to not like the super grim dark version of that. So like, I don't like ones, basically I like my serial killer books cut with something else. I either like it cut with the fact that it's YA, so it's not gonna get like too real. I like it cut with some version of like romantic suspense so that there is some sort of other storyline happening for us. Or I like it cut with just the overall fact that it's like our long running series. And so I'm not that worried that our main characters are going to end up being killed by the serial murderer. Um, the only exception to that on this list is that when I was but a wee lass, I did read and love The Silence of the Lambs. I read it because I adore the movie and originally. Um, and I just, I remember immediately going back and reading the whole, like the Red Dragon and Silence of the Lambs. And then was Hannibal actually the sequel? Whatever was published at that time, I read all of them. They scared the ever loving crap out of me. Um, but I love them and they are so dark. And you know, in some ways, I do think that they're probably somewhat books of their time, I would guess. If I read them now, I'm not sure what I would do with them. But I, as a kid, like, I read and loved those. And that is definitely like the darkest fictional one that I have ever loved. So the rest of these are all going to be a lot but they're gonna have something to lighten the tone. How about that? So let's start with Imitation and Death. So this is in the In Death series by J.D. Robb. And uh, the reason that I really like this one is because uh, this isn't a long running series. So you're getting a lot of character work. Um, I think the setup for the serial murderer is pretty cool because it's, it's called Imitation and Death because he is copying famous serial killers from the past. So like Jack the Ripper or the Boston Strangler or whoever. So it's sort of like a best of Ooh, worst of let's go with worst of worst of list of actual serial killers are the inspiration for each of the murders um and the fact that it is in this long running series that has you know that's very based in the character dynamics it feels much more like watching a police procedural where the crime of the week happens to be a serial killer as opposed to like the full-on intensity of a typical serial killer type book. Um, so I thought that's definitely one of my favorite serial killer books that I've read. And then uh, a great example of romantic suspense doing a serial killer book is Mr. Perfect by Linda Howard. So this is um, a kind of classic in the subgenre that is often cited as like one of the best. And you never know how it's gonna hold up because genre fiction I do think tends to age quicker than um, some other types of fiction in terms of like what like, you know, a, a mystery that was written in the 90s doesn't always work if you read it today. It just depends. Um, but this is one that I think does really work despite some of the like kind of technology differences uh, because basically it's a serial killer that is targeting this little group of friends. And because it's a romantic suspense, um, our main character is having you know, developing a relationship with the main investigator on the case. Um, but I think that it's just like a really effective serial killer romantic suspense novel. And you have this dread of like each one of the friends getting picked off kind of a thing. So I think that that's a great example of like a lighter serial killer novel as well. Then I have two YA picks. And actually I just realized both of these have either a supernatural or a preternatural element to them. Um, which I do tend to like in a serial killer novel. Like I'm down for if the serial killer turns out to be a ghost kind of a thing. Like, I think that's great. Um, so first of all, The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. So I will tell you that the more I read from Maureen Johnson, the more I believe that she doesn't really do a great job of ending her series very well. And uh, I would tell you in this case, 
just read this first book. There's, there's follow-ups, don't read those. This one works just fine as a standalone, and as a standalone, it is very good. This is basically about a girl who goes, to, an American girl who goes to an English boarding school. Um, she has sort of a supernaturally, ex like near-death experience kind of thing, which allows her to see ghosts, and the ghost of Jack the Ripper starts killing people again in London, and she is trying to track him down and work with the police. So I think that this is a really great YA serial killer story that has that supernatural element. Like I said, please do not continue in the series because it goes downhill very quickly, but this is very good and I would definitely recommend this one. And then if you watch this channel, you saw this coming. <laughs> because I recommend this series every chance I get. And that is The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is YA Criminal Minds. So if you watch Criminal Minds, you know it's like a serial killer of the week kind of police procedural. This is like a YA version of that. There are a group of teens who are being groomed by the FBI to uh, become serial murderer profile, like to be in the BAU basically. And the reason that they have been selected for this is that they all have not supernatural abilities, but preternatural abilities. It's sort of poised as like, we all have the potential for these, but depending on like our life circumstances and our genes, sometimes they get activated and sometimes they don't. So like, our heroine has like an ability to just notice every single detail and understand like what like to profile someone based on it more or less um, because of a traumatic thing that happened in her past and there are four books in the series plus a, a novella which I really liked um, and in each one they are tracking down kind of a different serial killer kind of situation so I absolutely love the series to be honest aside from my last pick if I had to tell you my favorite serial killer books it would probably be the series because I just think they're incredibly well done. Okay and then two other romantic suspense type ones. So the first is one I read this year which was called Say You're Sorry by Karen Rose and this is um, both a serial killer element but it also has a cult piece of it in terms of the backstory. Uh, our two main characters are trying to solve the case. They're falling in love. The serial killer essentially tries to abduct the main female like character and fails and that's how the guy who's in the FBI finds out about his serial murdering um and it connects to a cult that he he grew up in and escaped from as a kid um so anyway this is I think a really good example of you know Karen Rose can actually get pretty dark like in terms of the spectrum of uh romantic suspense writers I'd say she's on the darker end so like you know just know that like shit can get real sometimes in her books but this for me is a good blend of like shit gets real but it's not too dark for me so it doesn't scare me too bad um but yeah I definitely think that she does a good job with her with this particular one but then in general her serial killer books seem to be pretty good Laura I didn't put her on this list but Laura Griffin's uh Tracer series I think is also really good if you like a more light-hearted serial killer romantic suspense kind of thing but I will tell you that my very favorite romantic suspense serial killer book is The Obsession, which again, should not be a surprise if you watch this channel. Um, and I like this one. This is a, essentially like the heroine, the opening scene is the heroine discovering that her dad is a serial killer and essentially helping him be captured. And then the book is about you know, 20 years later or whatever, there's either a copycat or like, has he trained someone? Did he have a partner? Like that version of a serial killer book where you don't know if it's the original guy, if it's his partner, or if it's a copycat and they are coming after the main character. So um, I absolutely love this one in terms of like, this and The Naturals are my favorite like modern serial killer fiction type books. Uh, but we're gonna end this video in a very predictable books like whoa fashion. And that is because we are going to end it by talking about it and then there were none. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I know you <laughs> must be sick of me trying to sell you on reading this book. But, guys, this is a serial killer book. This is a serial killer book where the serial killer has lured all of his victims to an island, has cut off access to the rest of the world so that they cannot leave, and then slowly starts killing them all. That's a serial killer book. And it's very dark. It's very creepy. I mean, like, dark for 1940. 30s like this isn't as dark as like the silence of the lambs by any means just because of like what was appropriate in the time this is creepy af and it's just like real good i love it do i really need to t try to sell you on this again you guys know i just think you should read this book if you haven't so that i would say is my all-time favorite serial killer book 
but I really love everything that I mentioned on this list. And if you're looking for my version of serial killer books where it doesn't get too, too dark, at least in fiction, um, I think any one of these could be a good pick for you. So those are some of my favorite serial killer recommendation book type things. Uh, if you are a regular watcher of this channel, I'm not sure how much new ground that was really breaking <laughs> now that I look at the list. Um, but you know, I'm nothing if not on brand. Uh, and I think in creating this list, it did make me realize that I do tend to like my serial killer books kind of cut with something lighter because it's just so scary. Like I do listen to a lot of true crime podcasts as for so for some reason in the nonfiction version, I can deal with it a little bit more, maybe because I know since they're writing about it, like it's over. Um, but in a fiction version, it just gets to be a lot. Like The Silence of the Lambs is a lot. Like all of those kinds of books, they're, they're real scary. And I like being scared sometimes, but I want it with like a little dash of something else that's a little bit lighter. But anyway, let me know what kind of serial killer books you like to read. Um, that feels like a really creepy question to ask you. But what do you like in your serial killer books? Do you like them with a little lightness like I do? Do you want them full on scary, like makes you leave the light on at night kind of a thing? Um, are you like me and learn situational awareness from criminal minds and being scared to death of that? Let me know your thoughts below. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So if you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you're so inclined. I have all of that information listed in the description box below, and I think that will do it. I hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day. Stay sexy, don't get murdered, and I will just talk to you guys later. Bye!